everyone and welcome to Thursday Evening Prayers for this the 10th of March and that song was a Graham Kendrick song called Teach Me to Dance. The words were very fast but the words are brilliant so I would encourage you to google and read the words or even listen to it on YouTube. It's a great song with great words. We come together to pray. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. The hands of the Lord work faithfulness and justice. All the commandments of the Lord are sure. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And our opening psalm, selected verses from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion blot out my offences. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Purge me from my sin and I shall be pure. Wash me and I shall be clean indeed. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this evening is taken from Genesis 39, reading verses 1 to 23. Now Joseph was taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him from the Ishmaelites, who had brought him down there. The Lord was with Joseph and he became a successful man. He was in the house of his Egyptian master. His master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord caused all that he did to prosper in his hands. So Joseph found favour in his sight and attended him. He made him overseer of his house and put him in charge of all that he had. From the time that he made him overseer of his house, in over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. The blessings of the Lord was on all that he had in house and field. So he left all that he had in Joseph's charge and with him there, he had no concern for anything but the food that he ate. Now Joseph was handsome and good looking. And after a time, his master's wife, cast her eyes on Joseph and said, lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, look with me here. My master has no concern about anything in the house and he has put everything that he has in my hand. He is not greater in this house than I, nor has he kept back anything from me except yourself because you are his wife. How then could I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And although she spoke to Joseph day after day, he would not consent to lie beside her or to be with her. One day, however, when he went to the house to do his work, and while no one else was in the house, she caught hold of his garment, saying, lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand, and he fled and ran outside. When she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and had fled outside, she called out to members of her household and said to them, See, my husband has brought among us a Hebrew to insult us. 
he came into me to lie with me, and I cried out in a loud voice. And when he heard me raise my voice and cry out, he left his garment beside me and fled outside. Then she kept his garment by her until his master came home, and she told him the same story, saying, The Hebrew servant, whom you have brought among us, came in to insult me. But as soon as I raised my voice and cried out, he left his garment beside me and fled outside. When his master heard the words that his wife spoke to him, saying, This is the way your servant treated me, he became enraged. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. He remained there in prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him steadfast love. He gave him favour in the sight of the chief jailer. The chief jailer committed to Joseph's care all the prisoners who were in the prison and whatever was done there, he was the one who did it. The chief jailer paid no heed to anything that was in Joseph's care because the Lord was with him and whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our New Testament reading this evening is taken from the Gospel of Mark, reading from chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. When he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around there. There was no longer room for them, not even in the front door, and he was speaking the word to them. Then some people came, bringing to him a paralysed man, carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him, and having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, Why does this fellow speak in this way? Is it blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves, and he said to them, why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say stand up and take your mat and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat, and go to your home. And he stood up and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we never have seen anything like this. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. And so I ask a question. What is your greatest need? I know for me, and I bet I'm not alone, it's, oh, I could so use, I really need a good holiday. Or we might think, mm, I really need some new clothes. Or maybe like my husband, you really hope, you really need your football team to win tonight. Well, in the passage from Mark that we've just read, Jesus shows us what our greatest need is. These folks, these four men, wanted to get their friend Jesus. They wanted to get their friend to Jesus so that he could be healed and walk again. Their greatest need was to get him there. But when they reached Capernaum, there were so many people there that they couldn't get to Jesus. But their need was great, and so was the paralysed man. 
and so they climbed up to the top of the building. They dug a hole in the top of the building. I wonder how the people who lived in that building felt. Not sure I'd want anybody climbing on the top of my house and digging a hole in the roof. And then they dropped their friend down to Jesus. They were desperate for Jesus to see him and everyone around must have known why the man was there. And yet Jesus looks at the paralysed man and sees what no one else sees. He sees a man, a paralysed man, but more than that, he sees sin. Jesus said, son, your sins are forgiven. And I wonder if at this point the paralysed man was thinking, hang on a minute, I came here to be healed. I knew if I could see Jesus, I'd be able to walk again. But no, Jesus simply says, your sins are forgiven. Stand up, take your mat and go to your home. Jesus wants us all to experience his miracle of forgiveness. But to do this, we need to walk with him. Jesus doesn't forgive our sins just to watch us stay exactly where we are. He forgives us our sins so that we can get up and get going, trusting him and spreading his light in a dark world. Let us be his disciples, living our faith so that others may also be forgiven and walk in his way. Amen. Before we come to our time of prayer together, I'm going to play a song from Divine Hymns and it just seemed to fit so well with this reading. God forgave my sins in Jesus' name. Freely, freely you have received. Jesus 
Let us pray. Living God, in you there is no darkness. Shed upon us through this night the light of your forgiveness, your healing and your peace, that when we wake from sleep, we may know once more the brightness of your presence. Through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God of glory, you nourish us with your word, which is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us the light of your glory may shine in all the world. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed are you, sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. In the beginning you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. To dispel the darkness of our night, you sent forth your Son, the firstborn of all creation. He is our Christ, the light of the world. And him we acclaim as all creation sings to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. And now, as we come to the cycle of prayer for our East Midlands Synod, we come to this safe space where we can freely pray together, a community of people loving and caring for each other and for many. And on this Thursday evening, in our cycle of prayer, we pray for the ministers, elders and members of our churches in Northamptonshire. May they feel your blessing and may they know that tonight they are in our prayers. We continue to pray for all of those continuing to face the challenge of COVID-19, all key workers, NHS and care home staff, teachers and school staff, and those still administering vaccinations, and we think especially of this this evening because COVID has yet again hit the news today. Hospital admissions are going up. And so whilst many of the restrictions have now been downed, COVID is still with us. And so we pray this evening for all of those still suffering in whatever way that may be. We continue also to pray alongside those who have suffered physically and all those whose mental health has been badly affected by the privations and changes that they've faced over these last two years. Mental health is a key issue in this world at the moment. May all of those struggling know that our Father is there with them, carrying them through their troubled times. And for all of those who have heavy burdens to carry, may they be known to us and may they be known to God. We also pray for those currently facing rising costs in food, housing, heat and so many essentials. It's such a worry for so many people that bills are going to go up. And tonight, we pray for all of those caught up in conflict, whether forced to flee, to fight, or suffering the loss of loved ones. We think especially of those afflicted by the devastation in the Ukraine. We think of those families who've been torn apart. We think of those children who have been torn away from their families. We think of those people who have given up their jobs to fight for their country. And for me, it's really hard to know how to pray. But we know that together we give this to God because he has this world and has this place in the palm of his hand.
And tonight we continue to pray with Celia for Alfie as he continues to recover from surgery. We pray with Liz for her 12 year old great nephew Ryan and her daughter Emma. We pray for Prince with Cheryl. We pray with Andy for Mike, his dad, and for Liz and Ruth in their ongoing care for him. We pray with Judith for Catherine, her niece. We pray for the Reverend Ruth Dillon and for the Reverend Graham and Vera Mascari. And we pray this evening for all of those grieving the passing of loved ones. We think especially of those grieving for Joan Allen and the Reverend Michael Bond, especially for members of his family and his friends at Long Buckby United Reformed Church. And in a time of silence, we bring before God all those people that are on our hearts that may not be known to each other, but are known to us. Let's pray in the silence. Thank you, Father God, for hearing our prayer and for carrying us through these troubled, weary and worrying times. But we thank you also for the good things that you provide. And we are so very thankful. Amen. And now let's pray the prayer that Jesus taught to us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. I shared this final song with you before Christmas, but I just felt that it fitted well with what we've been thinking about this evening. We've listened, we've heard scripture, and we've heard music. But at the end of this song, as the music fades and all is stripped away, we can simply come because we long to bring something of worth and something that will bless God's heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you, all about you, Jesus. This is Jacob, my son, singing when the music fades. When the music fades, all is stripped away. And I simply come Longing just to bring Something that's of worth That will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required you search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you All about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it But it's all about you all about you, Jesus. King of endless worth, no one could express how much you deserve. The one we can call, all I have is yours. 
every single breath I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself is no what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things have been You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you All about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus A song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus The Lord bless us with his grace and fill us with his peace. Amen. And good night and God bless.